To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So today, I'm not gonna be able to work on the tiny house. I think this is like the 17th or the 18th of November and we got materials on order and I'm waiting for the materials. On the 24th, I think we're supposed to get the pallet wood for the walls and we're gonna use pallet wood. And this guy sells a huge pallet of it for $200. And I know a lot of people say, hey, you can get it for free. Just go to the stores and pick them up. Well, I think in the end, I would end up running around and wasting more gas. I don't have a trailer, so I have to use a truck and it doesn't hold that much. And then I would have to spend a ton of time taking the pallets apart. I'd also have to find those pallets that doesn't have chemicals. This guy does it all. I got some flooring underlayment that I've ordered. It should be here within the next few days. And then I got the metal roofing material coming. That won't be here until December 3rd or December 7th. I think there's some miscommunication, but either way, it'll be here in early December. So I got to get busy doing other things that I've been really worried about. As you know, we live off grid, so we're going to rely on firewood. And I've got eight cords of firewood. The problem is, is I don't know how much I'm going to use this year. I got that old Franklin outdoor heat exchanger that I built right down there. When I use poplar wood, believe it or not, poplar wood doesn't seem to burn all that fast. Of course, it's a little wet, but it seems to be really good. Well, I'm running out of the poplar wood and we've been running the stove since September off and on. It's mid-November now. We'll be able to shut it off today. But as soon as we get into the drier wood, that Franklin is just gonna burn it up. Now we gotta have really dry wood for this new wood stove that we've got. It's gotta be uh, less than 20% moisture content. And in order to do that, you gotta cut wood one year earlier than what you're gonna use it. Like I said, I got eight cords, but if I start dipping into it with the Franklin, who knows if I'm gonna have enough for next year for this one. So. I got to get on that. The neighbor gave us a tree. Well, you might be able to see it now that the right, not that one, but the right one right behind it. And then there's two others over there that he has given us. They're dead. He said we could have them, but they're huge and they're dead. So that's going to require some extra equipment. And right now I don't want to spend my money buying come alongs and cables and a bunch of extra equipment. You know, that'd be a couple hundred bucks when I need to be investing in this. So we're gonna go down and clean up the woods a little bit. We got some trees that are just not very healthy or they're gonna die or they're in a bad position. I've got them marked off. I've had them marked off since midsummer. And I've been really excited about coming out here and cutting firewood this winter, this fall and this winter. And I have big plans. Like I said, I got those two trees over there. And my plans just got all laid up with the tiny house. Of course, you try to plan everything out and you think, well, I'm, I'll work some on the house and I'll work, but we got all the materials on this all of a sudden and everything just came together. So, you know, I thought, well, I better get busy on it. Well, so I got some downtime. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna cut firewood. I'm not gonna stack it. I'm not gonna split it. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna cut a couple trees down and then cut them into logs and let it sit. And then when I have an hour or so, that happens a lot where I just have an hour that I could be doing something. I can go down there with the manual log splitter and just split them up, stack them. But I have a twin here. I call them twins. I don't know what you would call them or what they're actually called. But I have a twin here, walnut tree. And I really want to keep the walnuts. I like the walnut trees. They make beautiful wood, but we got several walnut trees. There's a walnut tree right there and there's one up by the house and they're just everywhere. But this one, I've been told all my life that twins are not healthy trees. If you're going to have to get rid of a living tree, get rid of a, a you know one that's going to die. It's good forest management is what it is. I have an oak over here also that probably should come down. That's a twin also. I just noticed that. I, I don't know why I haven't noticed that in the past. You know, I might just change my mind here. I was going to cut that walnut, but if you look up there, that oak is kind of mixed up with the walnuts. Maybe I'll just cut the oak down and it's a twin also. Now, I did want to explain this tree though. So let me get started uh, explaining how, why, how to cut this. This is at a huge lean. So it needs to come out anyways because eventually a storm's gonna break it down. And when it does, it becomes very dangerous. What they call this tree, if you cut it 
just without a wedge and you start cutting it right here, it will split the weight. There's so much weight at the top, it will start to split vertically up and down the tree. And so you have one uh, half of the tree still attached and you have another half of the tree that will pop up just like my arm right here. Okay, and so what happens is, is that swings up real fast. And it's called an armchair. And I guess the reason they call it an armchair is like those old reclining chairs, the, the footstool pops out. Well, that's exactly what happens. That footstool will pop out on this. But sitting here looking at it, I think this oak should go first. Uh, it just makes more sense. I don't know why I didn't see that before. I didn't mark it off or anything, but the left side needs to come down. See, if I do this, strategically the left side of this tree i don't know if it looks like we're shadowing the left side of that tree needs to come down because it's in the way of the walnut then this walnut needs to come down and then that walnut needs to come down okay so yeah i, I can't just be cutting i got to think about what i'm doing here so i'm glad i took a look and that's part of the safety procedures when you're I'm analyzing what you're doing with the tree you want to look around. What are the obstacles? All right, after further analysis, I've decided that I'm going to cut down one of the branches, the right side branch of the walnut, the left side branch of this hickory, then the right side branch of this hickory, and then I'm going to come back to the walnut and cut the left side of the walnut. I've learned that I shouldn't be wearing gloves on my right hand when running a chainsaw. And the reason is, is the glove gets caught in the trigger. And so when you're holding the trigger down and you let go of it, the trigger stays up. And so you're expecting the chainsaw to slow down and you're, you're moving it around unsafely now, thinking it's gonna stop. And it doesn't cause your, your glove's stuck on it. I have two chainsaws. I got an 18 inch chainsaw and a 14 inch chainsaw. And I like using the smallest chainsaw needed for the job. And the reason is, is the longer the blade, the more that hangs out there and it becomes more dangerous. So, you know, if you're cutting along and you hit the ground and it kicks back, well, if the blade is short enough and it's not hanging way out on the other side of the log, you're less likely to hit the ground and it's less to watch for. I've got my wedge cut out now. It's all clean inside there. And now I can do my face cut on this side and it'll fall over to the direction of the wedge cut. So I tried to knock it down with a wedge, but it got caught up in some branches over here. So I had to kind of keep cutting away at my hinge a little bit and then it rolled off those branches, came right down. Very safe cut. I mean, it wasn't the cleanest cut in the world, but it was pretty safe. Felt safe the whole time. Now the thing is, is you want to observe, don't get in a hurry. You know, step back, shut off the chainsaw, look, see what the tree's doing, come back, cut some more, try the wedge. And you keep coming back and forth to see what the tree is going to do. So you just constantly watch what you're doing as it's going down. Don't get in a hurry. Because once it goes, there's no stopping it. Okay, so I got that walnut cut up into little pieces. So I'll bring my wood splitter down here. 
and just do a few logs at a time. That's what Carolyn and I have done all summer. And we got eight cords out of that with our manual log splitter. I did notice that the tree was dying. Ugh. We had a couple limbs that were already dying on that tree. So it was time to come down for that, as it was. So for those that are gonna yell at me, you cut down a living tree, it's dying. And the other oak that I was telling you about, it has a limb on it that is dying too. So it doesn't have much longer. While I was down here, I saw a dead tree just across the creek and I thought, heck, I got a little gas left in the tank. Why not go ahead and get that one down? So that was an oak. Man, oak is so much harder to cut than walnut. And they're both considered a hardwood. Yeah, I got a little bit out of it. I just hope I can inspire you to do things you enjoy. Thanks for watching.